Well, welcome back everybody. This is my second day off of my 12 day stretch. And uh, I'm getting out in the hangar a lot later than I wanted to. It's already about 8.30 in the morning. Usually I get out here about 5.30 or 6. But this morning I got up and I spent a couple hours making a bunch of sticker orders and t-shirt orders. So uh, that's all done. Those will go out later today. I still need to get the drill bit to finish drilling some holes in there. But I figure out there's two things I want to do this morning. One is I can get this other side window trim piece cut and shaped and ready to install once I get a drill bit. The other thing I need to do is I need to spend a 10 minutes just cleaning up my shop. As you can see, it's become quite a mess here. I have three workbenches and I barely have a spot to put anything on them. So I wanna take a little bit of time and get these cleaned up and then I'll probably go out, get the drill bit and I can really get to work today. And before I get started, there's one more thing I wanted to clarify which I just briefly mentioned yesterday about drilling the holes in the plastic or the Lexan a little bit larger than the rivet or the screw you're going to, to use. And I just said it was to prevent cracks, which is true. But the reason you do that is because in the hot and cold weather, these, the Lexan will expand and contract at a different rate than the aluminum will. And that Lexan needs room to uh, expand and contract and if you have it locked down with a tight hole it can't really expand and contract there and that's where you can start to get cracks where you have the screws going through it so I don't know the exact size that I make the holes I just make them so that if I'm putting a rivet or a bolt through the hole I can wiggle the bolt there's basically enough room to wiggle the bolt around there and that seems to work for me um, on the last three airplanes I built, I did the exact same thing and I've never ever had a crack on my windshields. So that's why you make the holes a little bit bigger than the screw or the rivet. Well, before I get started with that trim piece today, I found a, a few spots and I need to grind out on the front windshield. This right here is the very top that sits on the spar. And I'm grinding, grinding out an area that sits on a weld and I just don't want it sitting on that weld. I want the whole top of the windshield to sit flat on the spar. I do remember doing this on my cruiser and on this airplane, I only need to do it on one side. On, it just depends on how the welds are. On the passenger side, the weld is, is more flat and it, it's not an issue. Here's what it looks like with the windshield back on the airframe. You can see where that weld would protrude up into the glass. And now with that little bit trimmed out, it sits flat on the spar and you'll never see that either because that aluminum trim piece goes over this area. While I had the windshield off, I opened up these holes on the side and I used a regular deburring tool to kind of clean up the edges. This tool works just as nice on the Lexan. While I was kind of fitting up the trim piece on this side, I noticed I had to, to shave off about a sixteenth of an inch on the back side of this piece of the skin that, that sticks up and gets riveted to the frame. So I ground it off with my Dremel tool and now I'm just cleaning up and making that back surface nice and flat and smooth. Well, now I have the passenger side done. This one, this side just went so much easier and faster than the other side. Probably because once you do something once and you have to repeat it, it's easier to do because you kind of get all the tips and tricks from the first time. Uh, everything I did was pretty much the same. I started with the top hole, then I drilled the bottom hole. I measured the uh, distance between the holes for, the in, for between those two, pre-drilled the holes in the aluminum, put it up to the airplane and drilled it. Uh, pretty simple. It was just, I don't know, it just seemed faster and easier than doing the pilot side yesterday. I just wanted to mention one of the things I think that made it easier is I got some what I think are much, much better quality drill bits. You can see here I just got these from Ace Hardware, but these really drilled into that steel really easily. I figured I didn't, I didn't really need to show you anything here because it's a, really the same thing as I did yesterday. However, I am going to try something different on this side. The sheet metal screws that I use on the other side are the same screws that I used in my cruiser, and they work but they're very hard to screw into uh, the steel. Now I did open up the holes in the steel to 332nd, which is actually the size you're supposed to use for a number four sheet metal screw, but it, it's, they're hard to get in. And what I'm gonna do on this side is I'm going to see if there's enough, if the wall thickness is thick enough on the tubes to actually thread it for those same three millimeter bolts that I used on the top. And 
the 330 seconds is about the size you need to drill the hole to tap it for three millimeters. Um, it's not exactly, but it, it's probably close enough to do. So the other side holes are 330 seconds. These are 330 seconds. I'm going to try to tap one of these, and if it works, then I'll, I'll take this all off, and both sides I'll tap all the holes, and instead of using those sheet metal screws, I will use the same three millimeter black screws that I have uh, going along the top. Now the top was kind of easy to do because the, the top spar is, is, I think it's thicker or has a thicker wall thickness than these side tubes. Um, so there's enough material there to thread. Like I said, the side tubes, I'm not sure, but I'm going to give it a try. Well, check this out. I have a three millimeter screw tapped into the side here. It works perfect. And uh, these are the same black screws, like I said, I'm using on the top. But that works actually really nice. Uh, that fits perfectly in there. So that means I'm going to go ahead and tap all of those holes. And instead of using those sheet metal screws, I will use those nice black threaded uh, three millimeter screws. Well, I think I'll end this episode here because I don't think anybody wants to sit there and watch me tap 14 holes. But I'm going to do that and I'm going to put everything away with regards to the front windshield, the top window, all the trim pieces and everything, because I think that's pretty much all done. In the next video, I think we're going to start on putting the bubble doors onto the door frames. Well, thanks for following along, everybody. We will see you on the next episode.